Hello everyone, so here we're going to do another question with work. I'm doing a lot of examples because you can really get some high marks in the exams if you understand this concept. So here we have a 20 kilogram box which is being pulled down a slope inclined at 30 degrees with a force of 10 newtons. They tell us that the slope is 5 meters long and there is a 2 newton frictional force. Determine the net work acting on the box. So I always like to draw it out first. So as with the previous videos, I'm going to do this in two different ways and you must just choose whichever way is best for you. And so the forces that are going to come into play will be these two over here. Of course, there's a normal force and there is gravity perpendicular. Oh, and there's gravity parallel. That's going to come into action. Everything that's in this direction. Now you can either combine all three of those into one force and then use the work formula or you can do them separately. So I'm first going to do them separately. So with a separate approach you take the three different forces. So I'm going to start off with the applied force which is 10 newtons. So I'm going to call it WA for applied and I know that that's equal to FA times by X times by cos theta. Remember I'm using this formula over here but I'm just looking at the applied force. So the applied force is 10 newtons. The distance of the slope is 5 meters. Now if I look at the direction of motion the object's sliding down the slope and the applied force is also going to be going down the slope. So that's an angle of 0 degrees. And so we're just going to say cos 0 and cos 0 is equal to 1. So 5 times 10 is 50 joules. I don't say left, I don't say right. Now we can look at the force of friction, for example. And so that's going to be equal to the force of friction times by the distance times by the cos of theta. So notice I'm always using this formula over here, which is the general kind of formula, and then you use it, in, you use it with whichever W and F you need to use. And so the force of friction is 2. Now remember when you use this formula, you're not going to say negative 2, although it's going upwards. The distance is going to be 10. No, the distance was 5. And then if friction goes upwards, but the object is moving downwards, so that would be cos 180. Now, if you type that all in on the calculator, you're going to get negative 10. That doesn't mean 10 left, 10 right. It just means it's removing 10 joules of energy from that object. And then the last one we need to look at is Fg parallel. Now, remember in the previous lesson, we said that the force of parallel is equal to mg sin theta. So we need the force, so it's Fg parallel, we need the distance once again, and we need the cos of theta. So that's going to be equal to the mass, which is 20, times by g, which is 9.8, times by the sin of the angle of the slope, which is 30, times by the distance of the slope, which is 5, and then cos theta. So now we know that Fg parallel is trying to make the object move down the slope, and the, ob and the object is moving down the slope, so that's going to be cos of 0. You can then type all of this in on your calculator, and that gives you 490 joules. Okay, so then the net force, I mean the net work, is just going to be equal to the WA plus the WF plus the WFG parallel. You're just adding them all together. And so WA was 50 joules, WF is minus 10, so you'll say plus minus 10, and then 490 is your parallel. If you add all of that together, you end up with 500 and 30 joules. And so the overall effect is that this object will speed up. So 530 joules of energy is being added to this object. Okay, now if we just, now that's if you separated everything. Now we can rather combine it if you want and that will look like this. The combined approach goes straight into the formula of W net equals to F net times change in x times cos theta. So it's this formula, but we're just looking at the network straight away. So to do that, we need to know F net. Now F net is going to be the parallel gravity plus your applied force minus your force of friction. Remember, you can have a minus in this expression as long as the overall result is positive. And then the distance, we're gonna, we'll have that and then cos theta. And so Fg parallel is mg sin theta. Fa, we know what that is, we'll fill that in just now. And friction, they've already told us, we'll fill that in just now. Delta x cos theta. And so now we can just go fill everything in. So the mass of the object is 20, gravity is 9.8. This theta is not the same as this theta, so that's going to be sin of 30 degrees 
plus Fa, which is 10, minus your frictional force, which is 2. And then the distance of the slope is 5 meters. Now, F net as a whole is going to act in which direction? Well, because the object's moving down the slope, and just from what we can see, we can it's easy to understand that the object's moving down the slope, and F net is also going to go down the slope. Okay, because clearly these two components are going to be a lot more than two. And so if you minus two, you're still going to have a positive. So the angle that we're going to use between our net force and the direction of motion is zero degrees. And that's cos zero. You can now go type that all in on the calculator. Just remember to use a bracket where I've got a bracket. And so there we get 530 joules. So we can see that we get the same answer as that. So there you have it, guys. You can either use W net straight away, which is a lot faster if you noticed, or you can keep it separate. The, po the positive aspect of separate is that you can keep track of what's going on a lot easier, but you must decide whatever's best for you. So in the next couple of lessons, we're going to practice this more and more, and you guys are going to become experts at it. So thank you very much for watching.